I'm going to start the lesson by taking you through some of the, the tips and the techniques in order to draw out the zebra just by eye and it's something I always encourage you to do rather than using maybe a grid or tracing because it's great practice. The more that you can improve those basic drawing skills, the better all the forms of artwork that you make are going to become. Now just a little point or a few points about the reference photograph. Firstly, I'm going to change the composition or the crop. So at the moment we can see the head and quite a bit of the body. From a compositional point of view, one of the easiest and yet most effective ways to improve the composition of both a photograph and a piece of artwork is to simply get closer. And this is especially true of portraits and animals. So if we zoom in to something along those lines, I think that's going to make for a more compelling final piece than the original format. Alrighty then, so let's look at the drawing out process. So you can see I've already put in a very rough, very loose shape there, and I've deliberately placed this a bit too high. So the top of the ears, which are around about here, are chopped off as you're looking at this. And this is just a great example of how you can spend a lot of time intricately drawing your shape out, but if you haven't plotted it out first and taken literally just a minute to do that, you end up reaching the top of your paper so it doesn't fit on, and you've got to erase the whole thing or squash it up and uh, you know it ends up looking a little bit of a mess. The way to avoid that, we erase this, is to just put in some very simple, very big shapes to begin with, just to plot that out. So I'm gonna say the bottom of the head, we were gonna have somewhere around about here, and the top of the head, somewhere about here. We'll go a little bit bigger than the reference photograph if possible, but I just wanna make sure that it fits onto the equivalent of my piece of paper, which is the screen as you're looking at home. So I've got a couple of points there, and then the bottom of the composition, the bottom of the neck, as we do it, we're gonna put somewhere around about here. Now for the actual width, I can just look at that roughly as a, a box. So if I say that the front of the nose, I don't wanna to get too close to that, but the front of the nose is there, then the back of the head is gonna be, maybe, or back of the neck, I should say, is gonna be somewhere around about there. So just a very simple plotting out to begin with. Now the next thing I want to do is just look at the angle of the head. So I don't need to get this exact, and I'm just going to look at a point that's maybe somewhere through the eye. So I'm going to take that angle and just holding the pencil towards the end. So I'm moving the whole of my arm, the whole of the arm, not the wrist. It just makes it easy to make this nice broad stroke. You can give that a quick check. It doesn't have to be exact, but just something that is roughly the angle of the horse's head there. And then I can look at this angle and this angle at the bottom. So that's a steeper angle because obviously this is a tapered shape. And just look at the angle of this here. It's not far off a horizontal line. So maybe something around about that shape there. And then let's take a look at the angle of the neck here. So you'll see if I take a line through, it comes just in front of the ear. So it gives us a bit of a reference point of, of where that ear would be. So let's do it somewhere around about there. So take that line through. So the ear is gonna be somewhere about here, a little bit lower down so we can fit it on somewhere there. Second ear, somewhere here, just very, very simple ovals. So I am looking at the height of the, the top across these two ears. Can you see how the height there, there's a bit of an angle to them. Okay, and then the back of the neck has got an angle to it, again, which is tapered comparative to this one. And then we've got this mane, which comes through somewhere like that. So it's very rough and ready, but it's getting me at this really early stage to think about the big proportions and the big shapes, and much more important than the details. So for our ears to fit on, we can then look at how the top of the head is actually down here. So now I can just start looking at a bit more of a firm placement. So side of the pencil, you know, I'm not looking to put any intricate contours in. So I look at this angle here, maybe could do with being a touch steeper. Let's 
check that one as well maybe a touch steeper for that one okay and our main I can look again at straight lines and angles okay let's go back here to this part of the head so now I can look at this negative shape here what kind of a shape is this here so this area and that will help me to judge the distance so rather than just making this line and thinking oh, how much further do I need to take it before I then break down into this neck point if I look at that shape it makes it a much easier judgment to make okay and then the jaw just comes in around there so you can see that line if we take a straight line up it goes through the center of the ear so you can see I'm out so this ear here needs to be closer or the shape of this needs to maybe be a little bit further down here just a little bit bigger that looks a bit better so that as a shape looks a little bit better than what I had it uh, now I can just start to refine some of the angles here so I'm starting to look at smaller lines now and smaller angles still using the side of the pencil it's quicker and it's also easier to erase so that one almost straight okay so this little angle here that represents the eye that we can't see whereabout is that in relation to the ear and relation to this length so if you look at that length there it's maybe half of this so the length distance from there to there is maybe it's probably a little bit less than half so I'd say that's about right if that distance there is half it's a bit more than that one okay so the eye now let's get the location of this eye in so very roughly I'm just going to put an oval in just to try and locate that and then you can do something called triangulation where we can take it one point to here two points across and three points so that triangulation will give me a really good idea of where the position of this is so the angle from here to here how does that compare the angle from this eye to the one that we can't see maybe needs to be a little bit steeper and then that creates this third angle between those two points which looks right looks about right so I know that the eye has to be somewhere in that position or not just somewhere but pretty accurately in that position okay and then if you want to you can just put a little bit of extra detail in the eye just the big angles nothing other than that more just to get the size of it relative to the whole head maybe the position of the nostril as well and then we'll just put in a line for the mouth so that would be stage one I can now erase all of these extraneous marks lighten up the marks that I'm happy with as well really really quickly this is what the kneadable eraser is perfect for don't need to use a lot of pressure either because I've used the pencil side on this is a 2B pencil by the way I would probably use a HB or a B but it goes a little bit darker so it shows up a little bit better on camera there we go none of these lines are going to be visible by the time we have finished the final drawing and you know even if this was going to be really photorealistic if it was going to be a photorealistic pencil drawing this still wouldn't be an issue these lines are not going to get in the way far less intrusive than grid lines for example and it's just got a much nicer feel to it than a tracing so stage two now is so much simpler because you've got this in place and that's simply going over your contour lines with more precise marks so you can start wherever you want to start to look at these smaller angles I still like to keep quite straight lines quite straight edges it's only towards the final rendering process that I put in all the intricate curves but wherever I can see a straight edge I like to make use of that so I can still look at shape I'm still looking at this as a shape here I'm not looking at line that goes all the way around the perimeter I'm looking at individual shapes so there's a nice shape there how does that compare to that one 
And one thing you have to be careful with an iPad, the disadvantage you've got over using a photograph is that it's so easy to zoom in and out that you quickly forget the proportion or the size at which you're drawing. So you look at that and think, oh, my line there, my distance is too short, but it's fine relative to the size that you were drawn at originally. So you, just something to bear in mind, it is something that can trip you up quite easily. And having said that, I think this needs to be a little bit further back. Because if we look, we take that line up through, it touches the corner of the eye. So just a good example of how you always need to continue observing. Okay, for the main, I'm just going to use a broken line just around the, the angles that I created. In terms of the stripes and the markings, I think it's worth drawing these in. You know, if it was a really loose and impressionistic study, then you could get away with rendering them as you go along. But I think to get some of these really distinctive characteristic markings, some of the big ones here, particularly the way that the nose area, the dark area runs into some of these stripes and how they're smaller across the bridge of the nose there than they are on the side of the face. Those kind of characteristics are going to really improve the authenticity of your final piece. So I'm going to put those in off camera. I'll come back in and we'll start with the pen. Okay, so there's my markings in place. A couple of quick points. Firstly, do look out for the contour lines. So the way that some of these wrap around the different structures, the different bone structures within the zebra's head, because they are definitely going to help you create this uh, greater sense of form, this solid nature to the skull. And remember also that every set of markings on every zebra is completely different. So don't obsess over getting them exactly right. Just look for the overall patterns of larger, thicker stripes on the neck, smaller, thinner stripes on the bridge of the nose, and the way that they move around the shape of the skull. All right, so we can leave the pencil aside now and go in with the pens.